the month of December just seems to have flown by in the blink of an eye and I think that's the case for everybody because this month is full of the holidays and seeing relatives and seeing friends and doing so many festive activities that the days just seem to run into each other and then fly by and before you know it it's the New Year's and before the New Year's came I did want to do a monthly wrap-up for December just to see what I did read this month and it turns out I ended up reading four books and even though that's not a ton the page count on most of these was pretty hefty well into the six seven hundred so even though it's not a lot of books I did manage to read quite a few pages the first book I read this month was a highly anticipated release for me and that book is called love redesigned by Lauren Asher Lauren Asher is one of my favorite contemporary romance authors her books are usually such a fun time and in this story we have Dahlia and Julian and they are childhood frenemies they grew up around each other in this place called Lake Wisteria their families have a lot of ties to each other and they're really interconnected and interwoven into each other's lives but growing up they were super competitive and were always getting into competitions with one another trying to one-up each other and they end up going to college together in California where I think some romance happens between them but then something goes really wrong because in the present when this book starts you realize that they're actually not friends anymore because of what happened all those years ago and Dahlia ends up coming back to town to Lake Wisteria where Julian has never left and it's because she has a broken engagement to this guy that she's been dating all those years and she's at a really low point in her life and she comes back home to have her family you know be there to support her and make her feel better and through doing that she ends up running into Julian and spending time with him they get put on this project together of restoring like this old historic house together and that obviously makes them spend time together and confront some of the things that have happened with them and then also some of those romantic feelings that have always lingered this story has all the great setups of a really great romance story because it's set by a lake it sounds like a magical little town with a fun family and that kind of small town vibe but I feel like the tropes were not fully flushed out in this book that enemies to lovers didn't last very long I would have loved for it to go on a bit longer have more of that enemy element which makes it so fun later when they do turn to lovers and I just think the characters also were not fully flushed out they had really deep backgrounds and a lot of mental health issues which I love the representation I'm so glad authors are now putting more of that in their stories because the more we talk about it the more we can share and learn and help each other so I did love those aspects but I just feel like everything was not flushed out completely I don't know how because the book is quite chunky so you would think that she would have had space to do all that so I think it was too long for what she was trying to do because it wasn't being flushed out properly so I gave this book a three stars. I think it's still fun. Give it a chance if you're looking for some sort of like light rom-com, but it's not deep and meaningful on the level that you would think it would be like some of her other books have been. So this wasn't my favorite of hers. I know this is a series. There's going to be another one in the story. I think about Julian's brother, which I am excited about because that's like a single dad trope. So hopefully she'll flush that one out a little bit more, but this one was not my favorite and I gave it three stars. The next book I read was a bit of a comfort read for me. It was a reread. I feel like during the holidays and this time of year, my anxiety kind of goes into full bloom just because of all the moving parts and everything going on. And also the pressures of like reflecting on the year you've had and the year you're going into. It just like sparks a lot of anxiety for me. So I wanted to read something that was comforting and also kind of gave me a good message at the end. So I reread Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien 2 and it's by Jomni Sun. This is one of my favorite reads of last year or the year before I can't remember but I pick this up at least once a year because it's such a lovely reminder to give yourself grace and to just take it easy and take it slow and that we are all on this wild journey of ride together and that we all go through things so this story is about this little cute alien here in the corner named Jomni and he comes to earth to study the creatures of earth and while he is here he encounters all sorts of animals and creatures who are dealing with their own personal issues some of them are dealing with loss and grief and some are dealing with changing and being accepted and trying to be different just all of these big life things that a lot of us go through and through the process of getting to know them and all the animals talking to him in return they all realize that it is okay to give yourself grace and that these are all a part of life and a part of our journey and that they make us better people and they help us create community with one another when we talk about these things it is just the sweetest 
cutest little book. It is a graphic novel and the story is told like in picture form, but it is really, really impactful. I know it seems a little silly that this little alien could talk about such heavy things, but the book is really sweet and it does portray really sweet messages about these really heavy things that we deal with. And it kind of gives you that little breathing space of like, oh my goodness, I'm not the only one that goes through these big heavy things that we're all kind of in it and we all have our cards to deal with and we will get through and we can give ourselves a little grace. So check this book out. It's very, very sweet. It's also a great book to give as a gift to somebody who you know might be struggling with anxiety or some of these heavier things because it does kind of give you that like warm hug feeling when you read it. Of course, I gave this book a five stars. The last two books I read were part of an ongoing series that I've been reading all year, kind of slowly making my way through, but I decided it's finally time for me to do a blitz and read the rest of the series. And those books are in the Sarah J Mass universe. As we all know, House of Flame and Shadow is coming out at the end of January, and I really want to read it in real time with the rest of the community because I was spoiled for some books before that, and I don't want that to happen with Flame and Shadow. So I am going to be doing a video, a vlog, a reading vlog of me blitzing through the remaining Sarah J Mass books that I have before I can read Flame and Shadow. So this month I was able to read Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn. These two books are number five and number six in the Throne of Glass series and I have got to tell you this series continues to just amaze and surprise me. I can't get enough. I have no idea why I have not been able to just sit down this year and read them all through and I think the reason is because each of them packs such a punch. There is so much going on in every single book. The world just continues to build and expand and you meet new characters. And it's just such an incredible story that I think after I read each one, I need a few books in between just to gather myself. And so I think that's why I haven't blitzed through them earlier this year, but I am going to do it now. I started with Empire of Storms. This was a five star read for me easily because what was so satisfying about this one and I'll give more thoughts in my reading vlog if you want to see like detailed um, thoughts as I'm reading it. But with me, this one struck a chord because it was the culmination of a lot of information you got in the books that came before this. So in this, they all kind of come together and it's so satisfying in fantasy books when you have been building up and building up and then you get to a point where some of those things start to come together like some of those breadcrumbs that she dropped two books before this. So I just love this book so much. I thought it was off to a slow start, but then it picked up right away. I loved all the new characters we got, all the new worlds. The world just continues to build and I am in utter awe of how she continues to do that. I love this book. I gave it five stars. The other book that was written in tandem was called Tower of Dawn. This is book number six. So there are some characters who at the end of book four kind of veer off in one direction and some that veer off in the other. So in this one, you get some some characters and then this one, you get the other set of characters that go to a different land. And this one is mostly about Kale. He is one of the other main characters in this story. Everyone seems to not like this book as much. And initially I didn't understand why, but then as you read it, you understand why this is not everyone's favorite in the series. It is a little boring. It does drag on at times. I still found it fascinating because I just really like the world and I actually liked going to a different land and a different part of the continent. And so for me, it was really interesting, but I have to say when it comes to action, when it comes to the excitement, it wasn't as exciting as all the others. So I gave this one four stars, but still incredible. Obviously you have to read it in order to know what happens in the final book in Kingdom of Ash, which I will be reading next. But it, yeah, I just, I didn't love it as much as the others, but I still found it fascinating. So I am really glad I was able to crank through both of these this month. They were hefty. I mean, it took me a good chunk to read them, but so, so worth it. If you have not started this series yet, please get your hands on it. It is so satisfying and so worth it to read. And I cannot wait to get to Kingdom of Ash and then House of Sky and Breath before Flame and Shadow. So look out for that Sarah J Mass vlog that's coming soon.
So those are the four books that I read in the month of December. Even with everything going on, I'm pretty pleased that I was able to read this many pages. It was a pretty good reading month overall, and these books brought me to a grand total of 80 books this year, which is such a satisfying number to end on. I did create a video a couple of weeks ago picking my top five favorite books out of all 80. Please go check that out because there are some really great recommendations in that. I cannot wait for the new year and all the new releases that are coming. I can't wait to continue series that I've started this year and then some nonfiction as well. I'm just so so excited for the new year. I have lots of great video ideas coming so please stay tuned for that but I just wanted to say a heartfelt thank you for supporting the channel this year. It was my first year on YouTube. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just throwing myself out there and I've had such a great time doing it and I really really appreciate all of you that are out there watching me talk about the things that I love and showing you bits and pieces of my life and all of your sweet comments comments and just everything to support the channel. I cannot wait for a new year. I'm going to push the channel a bit and take it to new places and show new and exciting content and I cannot wait for you to be a part of that. Thank you so much again for all of your support and I will catch you in my next video.